From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's great to be back with you. How are you today? I'm doing great, Steve, and yourself? I'm doing well. I'm, uh, I'm glad we're having another chance for us to, to chat. And we we talk, came up with this idea for this, this show based on a, just a casual conversation that you and I had, but it's been something that I, I've been thinking about for some time and I, I think comes up often, is in, and that's about making technology too simple um, and, and really um, underestimating what it takes to make it work. Because when, when a product works out of the box or when it, it's just something that, as people like to say, it just works, what happens when it doesn't? And that's always something that I think nobody really thinks about because they just think it's magic. And for those of us who have had to um, make things work manually and, and had those struggles before these products that either were um, pre-programmed, field configured, uh, have some intelligence that make them uh, set themselves up. Um, we had to make stuff work on its own. And when you do that, you tend to understand it a little bit more and you also tend to know how to fix it when it doesn't work. So that's really the trade-off there. And um, I, I'll, uh, I know that you have a lot of thoughts about this and both in firsthand experience and also in, um, you know, just your uh, j just general uh, perception of it. So well, let's dive in. What, what, what do you, what, what do you think of when we're, dealing with either so when a manufacturer or somebody says to you, here, here's this product and guess what? You don't really need to do anything because it's just going, going to work on its own. Um, I know I'm probably going to be uh, ran out of town for saying this, but I feel it's killing AV um, and the skill set, not just us programmers, but AV technicians. Uh, I heard, uh, I'm not going to name any names here, but I heard on a recent podcast talking about a well-known manufacturer and they're like talking about, oh, with this the equipment, you can send a junior tech in and they can set up the room because all they have to do is hit a button and it does everything for you. Are you really a technician then? You're just a person that, why a user can hit a button. So, okay, that button does the whole room. Great. It's simple. But now what if it's not set up right? What if it has an error? And like you were mentioning, Steve, like now what? Does that technician you set sent in there or that person you sent in, do they have the skill set or the knowledge in their virtual or their headspace toolbox, as I call it, to solve the problem? Or are they relying on that system alone? And, and I think just as you said, too, first off, you know, what is a junior technician? And then secondly, if you're used to things that, you, that you've only been trained that are supposed to fit into this category, then no, you're not going to know what to do when it doesn't work other than call the manufacturer. And, and I think there's a good, good example of that, quite honestly, is a lot of uh, consumer equipment, you know, wh whether you're putting in a um, camera in your house or a smart lock or a doorbell or one of those things, you, you set it up and you follow the instructions and it either works or it doesn't. It's almost like very binary. You get, you get a, a, a yes or a no and and there really is not much way to work around it or or figure it out if it's not working. Oh, I agree. And that's what I, I think we're losing the art and the skill set that we need to build. And I kind of like in our off the air conversation we were talking about, I like I chop it up to like, you know, we always say you got to learn to crawl before you can run. Well, we're taking with these kind of tools, we're taking the crawling away and we're expecting people to dive into running um, and we're not built that way. 
we have to learn to crawl before we can run. Yeah, I, w- I would almost say that you're driving them. You're not even letting them run. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the, uh, yeah. The, the AI is driving us. So they're not even, yeah, that's a good one there too. It's um, so, so, uh, you know, we're going back to what you said and uh, we kind of glossed over it a little bit, I think is the important part is that, that what we're doing is we're, we're not teaching people the art of technology. We're not, we're not the, the, the uh, all of the fundamentals and the key components and, 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 and the ability to make mistakes and learn from them and, and understand what's going on behind the scenes and under the hood, that's all getting glossed over. If everybody believes that you just buy stuff and you, and it, and you put it in and it works and you just have to press a button, like you mentioned, and quite honestly, and, you know, maybe you can kind of talk to this a little bit from the, the higher ed community. Uh, a lot of end users that would be appealing to them because then they would say, guess what? I don't need to pay somebody and, and why do I need an integrator and why do I need to have a programmer? And it, you know, the, all these complex things that cause me headaches, I can just figure out on my own. Yes. And that's, again, it's going to be another unpopular uh, opinion out there is this is where why IT is eating up AV um, and why I believe IT is AV or AV is IT. Sorry, I said that wrong. AV is IT. It's, but the thing is AV people who are yelling, no, AV is not IT. They, I don't think they are seeing the bus that AV, uh, that IT is driving and it's going to run over AV. And like the, these tools that are coming out are why IT is going to eat up AV if they don't play nice is because, oh, if they, and they, they say, I will need to take my position. If I come in and go, well, no, you, you know, we got to put in this camera system. We got to write these programs, blah, blah. But then the IT director go, hmm, I can go to big box store and buy this product, hit a button, and it tunes a room. I don't need you anymore. See ya. I just sub because, you know, no one's going to get rid of the infrastructure. No one's going to get rid of the computer at their desk. AV is now becoming that vital, but we're allowing why most people are sticking their feet in the ground and yelling, no, AV is an art, blah, blah, blah. IT is like, well, you're not going to play with nice. We're moving forward. We don't have the time to deal with you. We're coming out with these tools. And unfortunately, good enough is starting to become acceptable by people because of other people who are saying, no, you can't do it that way. you got to do it my way. And now they're getting passed by the bus. So where where is the, I mean, everything you said, I mean, I I, I, I agree with completely. And, and I think we are all, those of us who've been doing this for some time and those of us who are really invested in the industry and, you know, it, it, we're protective of it. And we, we don't like when people oversimplify the things that we work hard to accomplish. But on the other hand, manufacturers want to sell products. Manufacturers, um, although they do care about us, they don't necessarily think that they need to protect what we do because they need to make things hard to implement so they can protect our livelihood. So, so where, where is that happy medium, that compromise, where, where, where does the rubber hit the road there? Because as you said, the, there, there is a, the, the IT bus is coming and if everybody gets on it, AV is going to be really limited to only those select few systems that are either truly custom or have very unique challenges or, 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 or something where the art is still the focus rather than making it work and, and just getting it up and running so that it can do the, the, the basics, as you mentioned. Really, what I've been saying from day one, we got to come up with true industry standards that interrupt with each other. 
And I know I've said this countless times, so I don't even know how many times I'm sure people are tired of hearing it is, for example, I'm on a Mac right now. Steve, I'm sure you're on a PC. I'm actually on a Mac too. Oh, okay. So, okay. That hurts my, but I could be on a PC. I could be <laughs> on a Raspberry Pi. I, you know, but we could still talk to each other using standards, using standard protocols that allows a Mac to jump on the internet and send information to a PC, to a Linux box. You got Windows, you got Linux, you got Mac OS. And they can, yeah, they all got your unique things. They got to go through their own steps. But when the rubber hits the ro road and they need to get out onto the global internet and to communicate with each other, they can't with standards. AB doesn't want to do that. They all want to develop their own priority, their own special sauce. You know, when you got too many cooks in the kitchen, the kitchen's going to shut down. And that's what's going to happen. You we're going to, the big boys are going to unfortunately gobble up and you're going to have less and less big boys. Um, unless, and you're definitely going to get rid of all the small companies and these tech giants. I mean, look at Apple, look at IBM, look at Microsoft. They're coming and they're coming strong and they have the power behind them to do this. Um, and that's where AB is, you know, like, nope, Sorry, we're not going to, you know, I'm brand X. My brand is only going to talk to my brand. I don't care that you, brand Z it does the same exact thing, but I'm going to make, I'm going to add a little tidbit to mine so it doesn't work with yours. I mean, everyone gets mad about Mac that does that with their adapters, but we accept it in the AV world. Come on. Well, I th think your point is, is not only really important, but also very timely because the last year or two might have been handled differently had more products been able to work better with other products. When some manufacturers couldn't deliver, the ability to have interoperability would have come in very handy. Yeah. I mean, example, we take it in the IT world. If we couldn't get a Dell computer, but I can get a Lenovo, the user, okay, they're using it. They're, that's fine. And they still works with the corporate environment. Or, hey, I can't get the Lenovo. I'm going to HP. Like, again, it, the looks might look different. They might have different functionality, but... I can still access my stuff. I can still use Windows. I can use, still use Linux or um, it, the other things out there. Like I can use my word processor. I can use my internet. It doesn't matter what brand I'm on. But now, like I say, if I take brand Z's encoder, well, it's going with the AV over IP stuff, and I take this encoder, and I want to use, I can't get brand Z's decoder but you know, brand A is out there. I can get that, but they don't talk to each other. Like we won't accept that on the PC world. So we won't accept that in the IT world. Yeah, go tell your user, sorry, you can't get the computer because Dell's backed up when they know they can go to Best Buy or even Walmart and buy an Acer or a Chromebook and make it work. They're not gonna accept that. They're like, well, that works. Come on, like, give me my other AB products. But no, we, again, I keep going, we accept this in the AV world. Why? If you look at it that way, it's actually quite embarrassing if you think about yep. it. And, yep. and uh, you know, the, the question is, is that because of competitive advantages or, the, or is it because of um, lack of cooperation or, or because we haven't gotten everybody together and said, let's play nicely so that we can have an industry and we, we can be taken more seriously and serve clients better. Because to your point, um, if, you, if you think about it from the perspective of the computer analogy, you, you're not going to go change all of your computers just because you can't get one more of that same brand. And the same is true with AV. You're not going to, you know, imagine if you couldn't get one box and now all of a sudden, 
you you can't make your system work. The answer isn't to change everything over to another brand because you, that's available. Yeah, I I don't know really the true saying the root of it, but I kind of sum it up that AB is just digging their feet into the ground. They're so used to AV being that it just, not that it just weren't, it's that magic, you know? No one really understood it. Mm. And you had to be a specialist to understand it. And you, yes, there are, granted, you do need to have the knowledge to do it. But people are now getting tired of that as an answer going, well, you need to talk to the expert, the SME in this field. When they see that it, it's, can be achievable it can be especially in the it world we ex we as a site has come to a custom that i can go from an iphone to an android to a windows phone that i don't even know they're around anymore like i i can make those choices as an end user i'm not getting locked in but we're av is like no no sorry we're going to play our own special sauce to a point that the AV equipment itself is even trying to be IT equipment. They're trying to have DHCP servers built into them. They're trying to be network switches. And I, I think we're trying to be that too much of that closed box and not playing the open standard. And I mean, think about this way. I mean, I don't know how you got me going down this rabbit hole, Steve. Sorry. But look at encryption. The government has tried to shut encryption down for years. There was, when encryption first came out, there was no public encryption. Like you, uh, us citizens didn't have it. It was all on government. And anytime anyone tried to develop encryption, they either got pulled into the NSA and the government or they got shown national security, you can't do this. And then, but then, they kept fighting for it and they kept fighting. And now we have public encryption and now people get shocked when we don't have encryption. Like, what do you mean you don't have end to end encryption on your stuff? Like, but now like a AB is still trying to be what I say that government and encryption is like hand slapping anyone who's tried to get into AB, but you know what? It's being flooded and it is coming. And like I say, it's a bus and the hand slap is not going to work anymore. Yeah, well, I, I, I think we opened up a good can of worms. So I'm curious to hear what our audience is going to say, and I'd love for other people to have um, contrasting views on it or thoughts to please chime in and let us know too. That's what this is all about. It's about a conversation, and it's about learning together and and challenging and asking questions and getting answers. Um, the 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 thing that I think about in just in closing is that. A programmer's role has always been to make everything work and make everything work together. And we have to think about what impact does that have too in saying that we, you know, so on one hand, in the beginning, we said we don't want to oversimplify it because we don't want to minimize what we do. But then by making, uh, creating more interoperability, we're essentially simplifying or making things work better and easier. So it's, um, I guess there's, there's two sides to the coin and, and things to consider. And I'm just curious how a programmer fits into that equation. Yeah, no, I would love to hear what our, uh, listeners have to say about my little rant and I'm sure there are people who are going to have things to say and I I'm all open ears. And the beauty about integration is always, you know, trying to make it disparate products and systems work together. So we're, uh, you know, that that's what we do best, but, but I think we, um, w essentially your message is we need to grow up and be, be able to, um, stand together with it so that we are, are going to make, demonstrate that our livelihood is legitimate. Yeah. I mean, again, let's take it back to the programming world. We, and getting into more of the software development side of it. Like, okay, let's take the software of my uh, email. I mean, that is a program, it's typing. 
if I'm writing my compile uh, my email compiler in Microsoft Exchange, okay, they say I'm using Outlook, I'm using Microsoft. That's what's going to be my tool to send my email, but I can only send it to other people in Microsoft Outlook. What about Yahoo? What about Hotmail? What about Mac? What about Gmail? And all you like, we wouldn't accept that. And as us programmers, we make these applications talk to each other and using, yeah, they may all be separate. They all have their special hooks and all that stuff. But then they, again, it comes down to standards saying this is, you can do your special sauce. But in the end, it needs to be able to have these ability. And I think we need to get there in AV. With programming, hardware, everything is it. Yeah, everyone can have their special sauce, their special hooks, but they need to meet a certain standard of the like the ISO model. I think that's a good place for us to wrap this one. But I, all, all your points are very well taken. And I, again, let's let's continue this conversation and, and let's hear what um, you, our listeners, have to say about it. And and um, if we can drum up a conversation or or an online thread, that would be really cool. That would mean that we're we're making a difference. So so please chime in and let us know what you think. Um, James, how can people get in touch with you and uh, keep up with what you're doing? Oh, uh, Twitter is the easiest, AV underscore James King. Again, you Google me, I'm sure you'll find me out there. And for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media, uh, my company uh, website, controlconcepts.net, as well as a few publications that I do some writing for, and uh, including AV Network and Commercial Integrator and uh, avnation.tv for the State of Control podcast. And uh, we, as we said, we'd like to hear from you. If you don't know already, we're on YouTube. We're on uh, the both uh, podcast uh, platforms, Google and Apple. And um, there's plenty of opportunities to reach out and tell us what you think. And we're always looking for people to join us and um, expand upon the conversation. So if you're interested in that as well, please uh, reach out to us. And that's what we have for today. And this has been Ask the Programmer.